like a man traveling to a far country, who called his own servants and delivered his goods to them. And to one he gave five talents, to another two, and to another one, to each according to his own ability. And immediately he went on a journey. Then he who had received the five talents went and traded with them and made another five talents. And likewise he who had two, um, sorry. and likewise he who had received two gained two more, also. But he who had received one went and dug in the ground and hid his lord's money. After a long time, the lord of those servants came and settled accounts with them. So he who had received five talents came and brought five other talents, saying, Lord, you delivered to me five talents. Look, I have gained five more talents besides them. His lord said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You are faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of your lord. Thank you, Tim. Well, happy Mother's Day. If you came in by another entrance other than the one back here, you may not have seen the roses, so you still can get one. Just leave that direction. We have too many doors to try and cover them all. But anyway, there, we try to make this a very special day, and I want you to know that moms are very, very special. Because they make a difference in families, they make a difference in church, they make a difference in our community, in our world, in everything. It is just so incredible to watch how they work and what they do. So we get to talk about them a little bit today. Um, lots of good things happening here. Edison is here, and so I hope you get a chance to meet him. This week, Holly was baptized. She already took off, so... She's about this tall, not, not really, but it just seems like it. Uh, but those are great things that are happening here, and there's lots of good things that are going on, and so I hope you get to see a whole lot of those that are happening. So today we're talking about stewardship, but it's Mother's Day, and so I want to mix those two together if we can think along those lines. And so we start with the parable of the talents that Tim has just read. It's like the man going on a journey. He's got to get rid of his stuff somewhere because you can't just let it sit. You need somebody to take care of it. You need somebody to use it so that it will grow. And so he gives to his servants according to ability. I always like that part. He doesn't give you something you can't handle. Okay, he gives you something he thinks you can handle, not something you think you can handle. And so he always has greater expectations of me than what I ever have of myself. I've tried to talk him out of it a few times and said, uh-uh, this isn't right, this isn't, and he says, oh yeah, go ahead. And of course he says, I'll give you the strength you need for it. And so I think that's what works out for us the best, and I think that's one of the things we're able to see the most. And so he gives each according to their ability. The guy with five talents has able to go out and invest and make five more. The guy with two talents is able to go out and invest and make two more. The guy with one talent says, I'm afraid. And he takes it and he hides it. So when the man with one talent, just, he, he just can't cope with it all. He says, well, I don't want to lose it. I don't want someone to steal it. So I'll just bury it. And that's the way he approaches the whole thing. So the guy with the five talents, gets five more, and he comes back to the master, and he says, tell you what, I've taken your money, I've made five more talents, we'll split it. I'll give you two and a half, and I'll take two and a half, and that's not the way the story goes. Well, doesn't that seem fair? No. He gives all ten back to the master. Why? Didn't he do all the work? I see a lot of Christians with that attitude. I've done all this work, God, where's my blessing? That's what you have to understand about this relationship. He gives all ten back to the master. He gets none. And I don't think we like that very much. 
That doesn't seem like that's fair. That doesn't seem like that's right. That's not the way this whole thing is, is supposed to work. Because after all, he's taken it. He's been, I know it's only quarters, but they had talents. And they were able to make this thing grow. And so it grows into something that's really good. And it grows into, but he gets none. He gives all ten back to the master. The good part is when the master is pleased with him and he says, well done, good and faithful servant. You've been faithful over a few things. I'll put you over many things. And he gives him more responsibility. More things to do. Didn't you always love that? I think sometimes we wish the story would turn out different. God, I did your job. That's great. You have more. Now I can relax. That isn't the story either. The story is, now I'll put you in charge of more, and you will have more to take care of, and you will be blessed more. And so that's the way the story works with stewardship. It is a very, very important concept that we need to get when we believe. And so as Christians, being able to understand that this is how it works, and who our God is, that he's able to bless us, but it is all about him. It is not about us. It's not saying we'll work for you, God, as long as we get something. We get heaven in the end, right? Well, that's right, but that's not really the attitude. You give to me. I'll work some. We'll split it. No. It's all about him. It's all what he does. Notice it's not even our joy. He says to the guy with five talents, enter into the joy of the master. He didn't say, you know, relax and have your own joy. No, it's the master's joy. And so you enter into his joy. I think his joy's better, by the way. There's no amount of fun that I could think of to have that's going to be near as good as the joy he's got. And so there is the upside to this whole thing as you think about it. But stewardship is being entrusted with something that belongs to the master, and it is all about the master. However, the person who takes it and hides the money, the master is not happy with. And so there's some punishment that happens. He has the gift. He does not use it well. There is a punishment that happens. What he has is taken away and given. The interesting thing about this whole thing is he couldn't refuse the gift, right? It isn't like he said, oh, me, give me the money and I'll take it and I'll use it and then didn't. I'm not sure he even wanted it. It's almost like he was like a, you know, no, I don't want this. I don't need this. I'm, I'm only a one-talent guy. You know I'm not that smart. I can't do like these other people. And so he takes it, and the best thing he can do is keep it safe. And the master's not happy with that. Why not? I didn't want it in the first place. I didn't volunteer for this. You've got to understand who God is. And God blesses, and God gives, and our job is stewardship. Our job is to take care of what God gives and how God blesses. It is not up to us to say, thank you, I'll run my own life. I don't need your blessing. He says, no, I'm giving this to you. To not do that, to refuse his blessing, is to refuse God. And certainly that's when he rejects us as much as we reject him. Our only option is to go forward. But this is Mother's Day. And so why are we talking about servants on Mother's Day? Because it fits perfectly. It is so perfect. Because the absolute best steward you've ever seen is a mom. Right? I mean, she's given a child to take care of. And now she's expected to use and produce and make something out of this child that she was given, right? And it's amazing how well they do. It's really incredible to look at how children are a stewardship of a person who is entrusted to you, and you know it's about the master. 
you know it's not about you. It's not about you saying, oh, look, it's me. I'm the one who made this child. I'm the one who did all this. You know that's not what's going to make the difference. I mean, if you're really lucky, you might get a card on Mother's Day. That's about the best you're going to get, right? Because all the rest of the time, the kids think it's about them. Well, that's not right. No, because it's really about God. And it's really about being able to take and lead them to him and invest and make opportunities and help them grow up to be a great person. But none of it's about us. And I hope you got a card today. I hope you get a rose today. Because the job you do is incredible. And I think that's one of the amazing things is the way that we're able to look around and see some of the people we have that are growing up. They're pretty small right now. But as you watch them grow and you watch them develop, man, this is going to be a great time. Just being aware of all that they do. And it's amazing how many women prove over and over what good stewards they are and how faithful they are and the way in which they're able to take care of things. And it fits exactly with what he's saying because it's not like you can turn it down. Right? I mean, you're pregnant. And I know there's things you can do against that today, but that's pretty destructive in what we've come up with. But you can't be pregnant and then be unpregnant. Say, well, no, I, I don't want that gift. You've got it. It's yours. You're going to take it and go forward with it because you really don't have much other choice. And make it what's best. Make it what's good. And that's really the best thing you can do with it. Now, I understand not all women have children, and so let me be sensitive to that today. And so maybe Mother's Day is a hard day, not so much because you don't have children, but not all babies survive. And I think we need to be sensitive to that, and that may make Mother's Day hard, but on the other hand, not all mothers survive. And so for a lot of us, we don't have mom anymore. And that may make Mother's Day hard, but it doesn't mean mothers don't deserve honor. It means they should be respected. And for me, I think that's one of the best things I could do is to honor her. Nancy's not my mom, but for my mom, I give her honor. And I give honor to Nancy because she is one of the best moms I've ever seen. And she is able to do an incredible job of raising two boys. For someone else who raised a boy, we have a person named Hannah. She didn't have any kids. She wanted kids. There was a stigma against not having any kids. And so she prayed to God intently about that situation. And she asked God to give her a child. And finally she says, God, if you'll give me a child, then I will give him back to you. And he will serve you. And he will be your child. And that's exactly the pattern that fits with all of this. And so she prayed to God. And the promise is given to her. So when, this is after she's had Samuel. So when she had weaned him, she took him up with her. Along with a three-year-old bowl, an ephah of flour, a skin of wine. And she brought him to the house of the Lord at Shiloh. And the child was young. And they slaughtered the bull, and they brought the child to Eli. And she said, O oh my Lord, as you live, my Lord, I am the woman who is standing here in your presence praying to the Lord. For this child I prayed, and the Lord has granted me my petition. And I have made that I made to him. Therefore I have lent him to the Lord as long as he lives. He is lent to the Lord. And he worshiped the Lord there. He's probably about three maybe between three and five. So he is very young when he goes. And he lives in the house of Eli, the priest. You would think that'd be a good situation, but it's not. Eli's sons are not good children. Eli has not done a good job with raising his children. So why would she ever leave her son, her perfect son, her blessing from God with a guy who's done a terrible job raising his own? It's because she promised. And she knows that's where the development occurs for her and for her son. 
And so as she leaves him there, she gives him back to God because that's what she said. And Samuel becomes one of the pro greatest prophets ever. Because he was given a gift like that. She considers him a gift. She considers him a gift from God. And she says, Samuel, you're a gift from God. And she takes him to a place where he's able to worship God there. And each year she comes back as she worships God. She brings him a new robe and she talks to her son. And in spite of the influence of the house he lives in, he grows up to be an extremely faithful, extremely powerful man for God. What an incredible thing it is. It's like God is saying to Hannah, well done, good and faithful servant. Because he gives her three more sons and two more daughters. So that she is blessed by God. Because she has done such a great job with Samuel. It certainly doesn't describe all that she went through. You can never tell all the things it takes. We just want, to know, want you to know we appreciate everything. She had given everything to the master. She was happy for everything that had been given to her. What if we could be stewards of God's blessings like moms are? What if it was all about kids growing up? being able to raise kids, being able to do something from them. See, moms never give up, even when they feel like they might need to, but they never quite give up. I've heard the saying, it takes a village to raise a child. I do not like that saying. It is not true, because the village will blame you for how your child turns out. You just need to know that. I mean, that's always the saying, yeah, it takes a village, you can raise my child, go ahead. No, they're going to come back on you. So it really is your responsibility. Yes, it takes more people to be involved, but it really is parents' responsibility for it. My real question is, what if ministry leaders and deacons and elders and preachers in the church were as effective in their work as moms are in theirs. What would the church look like? Do you think it would be different? Moms shape the world. They do an incredible job of taking a person who doesn't know anything and can't do anything and making them absolutely completely capable of being on their own and working and being able to do so many other things what if men in the church did that kind of job we call it stewardship right and I think maybe on Mother's Day is a recognition to moms that's just a recognition of what a great job they do it might be an indictment against us as well. Why don't we, in the things God has given to us, do just as good a job? You want to know the reason why? They're not nagging us all day. They're not screaming all night. They're not there every time. I need to be fed. I need this. I need that. I need changing. I need... Maybe that's the difference. But when we're talking about stewardship from God, what if we could do the same thing? Moms, you set the bar really high. You do an incredible job with that. Maybe the rest of us need to listen and take notice of what you do. What if we were intent about making disciples of our children? What would change then? What if we were more intent about Bible learning than college education? What would change then? Would your kids be in Bible class? Would you tell them stories? Would you do the bedtime? It's stewardship, right? Isn't that what it's about? And maybe it's a matter of us being able to realize God has given us some incredible gifts because we don't always see it that way. The passage in 1 Peter, I think, is one of those that's pretty amazing. 1 Peter 4. Verse 8, he says, Above all, keep loving one another earnestly, since love covers a multitude of sins. 
Show hospitality to one another without grumbling, as each has received a gift. Use it to serve one another as good stewards of God's varied grace. Whoever speaks as one who speaks oracles of God, whoever serves as one who serves by the strength that God supplies, in order that in everything God may be glorified through Jesus Christ. To him belong glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. He says, keep loving one another. Love covers sins. Love doesn't forgive the way God forgives, but love makes it okay with the rest of us. Because we don't forgive either. I mean, we do, but God's the one who does the forgiving. And when you love somebody, it makes it okay, doesn't it? It lets you say, all right, I'll let it go. Show hospitality without grumbling. And then as good stewards of God's very grace. That's what it's all about. Stewards of God's grace. I think that's incredible to realize. That we are stewards of God's grace. Because we're able to share that with so many people. He says you do it in a couple ways. You do it by the way you speak. By the way you talk. By the things that you say. You do it in the way you serve. By the things that you do for other people. We share the grace of God with so many other people. Everything is about the glory of God, and that's what he says. Do we want to argue with grace and say, no, I don't really want it? Then you're stewards of it. If you have it, then it's something for you to take and something for you to use. Something for you to share. It's a responsibility before God. It's the same as raising a child. It's something you have to deal with. It's something you have to do. And God has given us opportunity and ability. And it's not some huge overwhelming thing. It's just every day. It's a little bit every single day. And that's what it is that you do. God has given us that opportunity. He's given us that ability. Who are we to not accept that gift? It's something we're able to do. We're stewards of children. We're stewards of grandchildren. We're stewards of the grace of God. We're stewards of the gospel. What an incredible thing it is to be able to see God who has blessed us so much. And I think one of the people who we see as being blessed more than maybe any other is Mary. Because it's such an unusual situation An angel comes to her and he says, you're favored by God. You're going to have a child, call his name Jesus. He's going to be great. He will be son of the Most High. He will be king on the throne of David. He will be king over the people of God. What I want you to realize is her response. Mary said to the angel, how will this be since I am a virgin? And the angel answered her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. And behold, your relative Elizabeth in her old age has conceived a son, and in this sixth month with her, who, and it is, this is the sixth month with her who was barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. And Mary said, Behold, I am the servant of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word and the angel departed from her what a response yes I'll have the son of God would it make you nervous I mean would you want to say well no thanks I I think somebody else should do that Uh, I don't really want to take on the idea of being son of God no he says to her Nothing is impossible with God. And we need to know that going in. We need to know that as stewards because we may not have any confidence in our ability to take care of the great gifts that God has given to us. And we may just not quite understand and not feel capable of the job, but I think we have to understand nothing is impossible with God. And as long as he's the focus and he's the main one, we have Mary's answer. I'm the servant of the Lord. Whatever it takes. She's willing to do whatever it takes. Does she feel ready? Chances are she's a teenager who is now pregnant and not married. 
Does that make you ready? Boy, that's a pretty scary place, isn't it? You think people are going to judge you then? She says, let it be done. And he isn't asking. He's blessing. And that's the way you have to look at it. Okay. I am being given the blessing. It wasn't a question, would you like to be? It was, you will be. We have opportunities from God. She had opportunity to make changes because grace changes everything. It didn't Jesus change the world. And God has given some children, and they will change the world. Whatever shape it takes will be according to the children that we have now. What opportunities we have from God. The question is, are we willing to take advantage of those opportunities? He's entrusted the gospel to us to preach that. He's entrusted children to us. He's entrusted friendships to us. He's given us spiritual relationships. We're able to have all of those things. What an incredible gift it is that God gives. What stewardship we are given with the blessings that God has given to us. And then he says, now just watch your life. He entrusts us with his grace for salvation. He says, just explain it to people. That they can come to me, they can repent of their sins, they can be baptized into Christ, and they are able to have this grace for themselves. They're able to be filled with the Holy Spirit. They're able to have so many more blessings. And as maybe we honor moms today, and they do so well with what God gave them, what if the rest of us decided to do as well with what God has given us? Would it change the world? Maybe it's time to change your life because God is offering you a truly great blessing. And if you haven't taken advantage of that, today's the day. Make sure you do it. Come while we stand and sing.